Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and this is the Nokia Lumia 1520. Is it a smartphone? Hmm, is it a tablet? Hmm, I hate the term phablet. It's actually more than that, it's a really lovely, lovely device. And I've been testing this for over two weeks now and I really have fallen in love with it, I really have. It's not going to replace my iPhone, I'll tell you the truth. My iPhone 5S that I've got here is uh, still my sort of daily driver, but this is so good it really has impressed me. In fact, while I've got my iPhone in my hand here, I'll just show you them side by side so you get to see how the 1520 actually dwarfs the size of the iPhone 5S. And then I'll also show you these from the back just so you get to see what they look like from the back. Now, yes, my iPhone 5S is in a case, but you get to see the sort of size difference between the two. The thickness is roughly the same. Now, the size of this lends it to the phablet term. It's in between a smartphone size, something that's easily pocketable, and in between maybe a seven inch tablet or an eight inch tablet. And it certainly negates the need to carry around two devices. For many people, they don't want to carry around a smartphone and a tablet, so they leave the smartphone in their pocket, they leave the tablet at home, and this sort, sort of solves that problem. Now, you can fit a lot of these live tiles on, the 1920 by 1080 display, which is absolutely glorious to look at. It really is uh, just such a good display. And when you're using it for normal apps in this sort of portrait mode, this is one of the issues with the 1520. Now it's hard to show you on camera, but look, if I try and stretch my thumb across, I cannot uh, reach the opposing side of the screen. Then there's no way I can reach this top sort of left-hand corner of the screen either. Absolutely impossible. Holding it like this, you can use it two-handed beautifully. And if you turn it round, obviously into landscape view, this is fantastic for doing tasks and obviously for watching videos or reviewing back photos. So overall, the size is a little bit cumbersome for one-handed use, but it's more than manageable. And it's a very slim line device, very well made, high quality materials, available in lots of different colors. Uh, obviously the really nice white version here, and it just is a joy to use. Performance is very good. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the performance of this thing on the back. You see this circle here, this is a really good camera. Now I've done a full HD uh, 1080p video test with the 1520. I'll leave a link in the video description to this. And um, that particular video shows you how good the video capture is with one little problem, and that is color shift. When I was moving the camera around from white to different colors, there would be a color shift. It only happens in video, in photos it doesn't happen. And using this for photography, really great photos. Uh, the color not entirely accurate, but certainly the detail, extremely good indeed. You will not be disappointed with the camera on the 1520. With regards to call quality, well the actual call quality is really good. Crystal clear through the earpiece, nice and clear through the microphone. But look, this is one of the things that I didn't enjoy too much. It is a big phone, or phablet if you want to call it a phablet. It's very big to hold up to your ear. In public, I felt a little bit sort of strange holding up such a large device to make and take phone calls. Um, I will admit that it wasn't my cup of tea. Uh, I would prefer to use this with something like a Bluetooth headset purely because of the size of it. And you do look just a little bit silly holding up such a large device to your face. But that said, uh, my time with it has been really enjoyable. The battery life on this is fantastic. If you've got it in standby mode, let me just flick down that battery meter at the top. In standby mode, it is phenomenal. Hardly drains any battery at all when it's in standby mode. When you're actually using the device, if you're a medium user, you'll easily get a full day. Even if you're a heavy user and you're playing games, watching videos, I still think you'll get a full day between charges. Uh, the actual feel of this device is very, very well made. It's a premium device and Nokia have done fantastically on the hardware. Now, I've mentioned this in previous videos about the app selection. Uh, it's changed. My opinion has changed a lot. All of the mainstream apps are now available on Windows Phone. So you won't have any problem if you use the likes of Twitter, Instagram, etc. No problem at all, obviously, with the built-in apps, email and the browser. It's only the occasional app you'll f struggle finding. And that is just if you're used to using it on another platform. For example, on iOS, my banking app, 
is not available on Windows Phone, but they're very few and far between now. So the OS is maturing, the App Store is maturing, and it offers up a really good alternative platform to iOS and Android. My time with this, the Nokia Lumia 1520, has been really good indeed. I've really enjoyed it. It's a fantastic smartphone. If you're looking for something with a larger screen, full HD screen as well, full HD video capture, and a fantastic camera, then I'd definitely check out the Nokia Lumia 1520. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do hit that like button. Please do subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see another video of mine, please do click the annotation on the top of your screen now. And also, you can click the annotation on the bottom of your screen and subscribe to the Geekanoids channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all again next time.